right? So when we're here in Daniel, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, we've looked in Acts 17. Sorry, I got a review. I forgot to hit my button. Um, we, <laughs> all right, we see how that those folks in Athens around Mars Hill made Jesus Christ and the resurrection two separate gods, okay? So now we're in Acts chapter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 4, verse 5, concerning the healing of the impotent man. It came to pass on the next day that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caius, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. Now, understand, these are characters who were, um, who played a paramount part in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So, if you're Peter and you're John, I don't think you're looking forward to this meeting. Now, to, to be honest about it, right? So, <laughs> and, and when they had set them in the midst... And I want you to feel that. And that big horseshoe, all of them looking down on them. It was a very intimidating, um, it was a very intimidating place to be. And they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Um, this is this is not Peter. It's Peter, okay, and it's a lot better Peter than we had back there with the little maid and the fire. Remember, uh, yeah, we got a different Peter here, but this is the Holy Spirit. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a situation where men thought they were going to rule and get their message across. And the Holy Spirit takes over, and he gets his message across. Um, it's a lot like the stoning of Stephen. I don't think that's the message they wanted to hear, okay, about their generations of stiff-necked rebellion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure that's not how they wanted that meeting to go. But the Holy Spirit took over. And if you'll notice, um, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day examine the good deed done unto the impotent man by, by what means he is made well, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, can you imagine that name ringing in that Sanhedrin? That's the last thing these guys wanted. But they asked, <laughs> by what name and by, and, and, and by what way are you doing these things? Now, that isn't what they had in mind. They had in mind um, um, their protocol, uh, their political idea. Uh, basically, they were saying, who do you think you are healing this impotent man like that? And preaching the resurrection. That's how they meant it. Right? By, by, what, by what authority? Uh, who, who do you think you are? Well, they asked. So the Holy Spirit takes over the meeting. Oh, you want a name? Oh, that's not a problem. Now, that's not the name they wanted to hear. Uh, whom ye crucified. Whom God raised from the dead. Even by him... Doth this man stand here before you well? Peter's answering their question. They asked, by what name? By what authority? By what means? Well, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, in other words, they came to intimidate, maybe even crucify these guys if they could get away with it. But the Holy Spirit takes over. And in verse 11, this is the stone which would set a, set, which was set at naught, and Peter adds, of you, builders. Uh, you'll see those two words aren't, aren't there in Psalms 118, which has become the head of the corner. 
Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, now that's somebody that is moving according to the Holy Spirit. It isn't always a message that pleases those that are in, in, around them. This was not a pleasing message to that Sanhedrin. But the Holy Spirit, God's program, was, what was the Great Commission? That you begin to propagate the gospel where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay. This is God's program. And what better place to start than with the leadership? All gathered together there. You see, uh, there is a new administration in town, and it's, it's Christ and his church. This is that stone which was set at naught of the builders, or of you builders. It's now become the head of the corner. And how many times did they sing that holy old song that Asaph had written? And notice... And now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with who? The risen Savior. That they'd been with Jesus Now, that's a very powerful idea if you sit and meditate on it a minute. This is the one, as Peter had said, that, had, that they had crucified and slain. Uh, that they had sealed with the seal of the door on that uh, grave, on that, on that tomb, that, that tomb on the grave, Right? They had to acknowledge that Peter and John had been with Jesus. They had to acknowledge that he must be risen. See what I mean? All right, and beholding the man who was healed standing with them, what are you going to say? <laughs> There's the evidence. There he is, standing tall. What are you going to do with that? All right, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that, in, that, for that indeed a noble miracle has been done by them is manifest to all those who dwell in Jerusalem, and we can't deny it. Well, how are we going to get out of this one? What are we, how are we going to get this thing stopped? But it spread no further among the people. Let us threaten them. There we go. There's the solution. We'll threaten them. <laughs> and, and, um, but what I want to point out about this, I'm not going to continue to read all of this and their response. They had to acknowledge what? That these two men had been what? With Jesus. That's the testimony. And that's the testimony Daniel had. Uh, they knew that within Daniel that God was there. They had to acknowledge that. They couldn't get out of it. Uh, even the enemies of Jesus Christ, they had to acknowledge it, that they had been with Jesus. They didn't like acknowledging that. Okay, it's the last thing they wanted was to have a representative uh, of the resurrected um, uh, resurrected Christ and of Jesus from Nazareth. But like they said, a notable miracle has been done. We can't get out of it. Um, these are places of, um, the, this is what ought to be the testimony. And this, again, we're seeing how Daniel, in the court of this king, as one who had been carried away, okay, a Hebrew, there would be uh, the pressure of compromise, at least. There would be uh, the feeling of, boy, we don't want to rock the boat right here in the Chaldean, 
right in the theater of the court, in the middle of the court of the Chaldeans, not, not with Daniel, uh, not with Peter and John. Um, later on, they said, um, uh, Peter said, uh, other apostle answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. <laughs> They're witnesses for Christ, aren't they? Now let's look in chapter 5 and verse 27. We're coming to it. And notice, when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, did, we, did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in his name? We thought we made that clear when we threatened you last time. <laughs> right? <laughs> and behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. What a wonderful testimony. Why you went out and instead of keeping your mouth shut, now all Jerusalem is filled with this doctrine. Um, and notice, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Oh, their tune has changed. You remember what they said to Pilate. Remember what they said to him? This man's blood be upon us and our children. Crucify him. Remember that? Now notice in verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. It's not our problem. <laughs> it's your problem. Um, we, we're his witnesses. We can't do anything but. And notice in the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with the right hand to be a prince and a Savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so, and so is also the Holy Spirit whom God has given to them that obey him. We are his witnesses. We can't do anything but. Now let's look in the book of um, Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Acts 6 8. Stephen. You remember Stephen. And look here in verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians and Alexandrians, verse 9 of Acts 6, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the what? And the spirit by which he spoke. Do you see that testimony? <laughs> All right, that's the testimony Daniel had in the middle of this Chaldean court with this very powerful king. All right, let's look in the book of... Um, Let's look in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, for just a moment. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Ezekiel, chapter 37. And let's look here in verse 1. And the hand of the Lord was upon me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will, I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with the skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, so what I wanted to show you there is how that uh, as they said, in Daniel is the spirit of the, of, of the gods. Now, that's how they saw it polytheistically. <laughs> but they were right on theologically because it was Daniel was God's prophet and the spirit of the Lord was moving in him. 
And he was able to do what the nation failed to do. And that was to give a testimony to the Gentile nations around them. Uh, even in this situation with this dream. Um, let's look in Revelation chapter 4 for a minute. The book of Revelation chapter 4. Um, is this our testimony? Uh, is this what men would say of us? One that has been with Jesus. One in whom is the Spirit of God. And look in the book of um, Revelation 4. After this I looked and behold a door was open in heaven. And the first voice that I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me which said... Come up here, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Um, these are spiritual happenings. These aren't perchance. Uh, don't read this like a storybook. Uh, this was ordained of God, you see. Uh, this was God's program being fulfilled in spite of what was happening at Jerusalem and in the land, the promised land. God's word is going to be propagated. He's going to have true witnesses, you see. Uh, the spirit of the Lord is going to move in men to make the kingdom, God and his kingdom, known. <clears throat> All right. Let's go back, if you will, please, back to the book of Daniel. Well, before we do that, let's, let's stop off in the book of Peter, ow, uh, chapter 1. 1 Peter, chapter 1, please. 1 Peter, chapter 1. And we'll look in verse 9. 1 Peter 1, 9. Okay, verse 9 of 1 Peter 1. Receiving the end of faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? Or at what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them? Do you see that? The Spirit of Christ who was what? In them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. In Daniel was the Spirit of God. All right, let's go back now, and I'm going to at least... Oh, we can get somewhere with this. Let's go back to the book of Daniel... Chapter 4, and I want you to notice how this all begins. And if you look in chapter 4, verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, languages, that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the, guy, that, that the high God hath wrought toward me. Um, what do you have here is a testimony of Nebuchadnezzar how the Most High God was showing him these things. Okay? Now verse 3. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion from generation to generation. Um, that's a tremendous Testimony, isn't it? That, that's a declaration. Uh, if you notice, it's written with exclamation points. Uh, how great is God's signs and how great are his wonders. Uh, now, I want, to, I want to teach a little bit on this because we know there are movements out there that have made signs and wonders everything. So let's understand uh, what this is for, what it's for. Um, signs and wonders from God uh, can have different purposes. It depends on the situation, right? Because there were signs and wonders that were given to Egypt. And uh, they were given in judgment. 
And God was declaring war on their system, the stuff they worship. They worship the Nile. Okay, they worship what God plagued them with. <laughs> okay, and he did that that they may know that I am the Lord, that I am God. And guess who else he did that for? Israel. Uh, they had kind of spiritually fallen to sleep. Uh, they, they were kind of going along with the economy uh, and everything that was going on there in, in, in Egypt. Um, they had been uh, Egyptianized rather than the Egyptians being Hebrewized, right? And you remember when they when they um, uh, um, complained against Moses, oh, that we could have the leeks and the garlics and all of the wonderful things in Egypt. I guess they forgot about their children being thrown in the Nile. Guess they forgot that part. I guess they forgot the part where. They were literally worked to death. Okay? I guess they forgot about all that. Uh, but you can see how that Egypt had gotten into God's people. Uh, you, can take God's, you can take Israel out of Egypt, but we didn't get Egypt out of Israel. Right? And that caused a lot of trouble throughout their wilderness walk to the point of the day of provocation. And so the resolution was, you won't die in the land because you won't go into it, and we're not going back to Egypt, so you'll die out here in the wilderness. <laughs> and that was their testimony. Their testimony was unbelief due to hardness of heart. Not now. Okay, we got to continue here. Just hold on a minute, Lois. I got to get them back on. I got 10 minutes left and it, it bombs out. Okay, here we go. We'll get them back a bit. I'm going to get us on showtime if it kills me. Admit. Okay, that's three. All right, we'll get the others as they come. Okay, so let's look now further, if you will. And I want to, as I introduce this, um, we don't make signs and wonders our religion. Uh, and why is that? Trying to get Lynn in here. See if we can move her in. All right. Should be in it. I don't think I got her. Hold on a minute. There we go. We got everybody home. Okay. Because the enemy can also do signs and wonders, can't they? Right? Can't hear. Okay. We can't hear you. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Like yeah, the like yeah. the Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? All right. I don't know why it did that. I don't know. Um, what I'm saying is we cannot make signs and religion, signs and wonders, our religion. That's not right. what they're for. The signs are an indicator. They they point to something. The wonders were for authentication. Of God's authority. A wonder is something that God performs that can only be explained by the power of God. But we don't make a religion out of it. Um, we don't worship the sign and the wonder. That's not what they're for. And remember, about demanding a sign or a wonder shows a lack of faith. Mm -hmm. And also, signs and wonders can be performed by Satan. Mm -hmm. So you want to be kind of careful that we understand what signs and wonders are for. Now, what Nebuchadnezzar is saying in Daniel 4 is exactly right, actually. How great are God's signs and wonders? 
And what he is doing is acknowledging that these signs and wonders are coming from the God of Israel. He's acknowledging that. And from the king of the everlasting kingdom and dominion. So um, we'll begin to look at this. Look in the book of Acts chapter 2 and in verse 22 for a minute. Acts chapter 2. Acts 2 and in verse 22. And notice what it says as Peter is explaining what was going on. And remember, what was the sign there? Tongues. And you, we, and you know how that that's been misconstrued. Right? We have people running around. Everybody's supposed to speak in tongues and save. That's the biggest lie there ever was. That's not so. The Bible says the opposite. Do you see what's happened there? See? That's taking the sign or the wonder, okay, and that becomes the central focus, even for salvation. Now we have a different gospel. That's no different than the Galatians with circumcision. See? Um, uh, you, uh, yeah, you, you got to be saved by grace through faith, but you better be circumcised to get those promises of Abraham. That's not what circumcision was for. What was circumcision? It was a sign of the promises of God. Do you see how that can be done? Uh, and it is deceptive. It's like the old crafty enemy to do something like that, isn't it? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Um, taking something that is, is pure and true and then putting an interpretation to it that has, has absolutely nothing to do with Christ and his gospel. In fact, perverting the gospel of Christ. And the Galatians had perverted the gospel of God's grace. All right, now look at Acts chapter 2, verse 22. The sign that was there was these devout Jews heard these Galileans speaking in the languages of the country they had come from. And they knew these Galileans weren't the most educated people in the world, so they knew that it was not they who were doing it. And so they said, what does this mean? They knew it was a sign. What's this pointing toward? And that opens it up for Peter to give the gospel and begin the church of Jesus Christ. And if you look in verse 22, ye men of Israel... Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by, by what? Miracles, Miracles, signs, and wonders, wonders, which God did by him, Jesus Christ, in the midst of you, as ye yourselves know. Now, what's Peter doing? Those wonders, signs, and miracles, you were there. You saw them. You know. Uh, kind of like the men in the Sanhedrin. Well, um, this guy stands here whole. Uh, what are we going to do about that? We can't get out of it. We can't deny it. There he is. And we, we used to give him uh, money every day when we came in the temple. So we, we've known him all these years. We know this isn't a prank. What are we going to do? Well, let me see. Let's threaten him. I don't know. <clears throat> I guess what they came up with, right? But here, Peter is pinning it on him. And what's he saying? You know you saw those things. You know you were there, which he did right in front of you. Right? Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken by wicked hands and have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Um, let's look further in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Uh, there's a warning concerning these things. Look in Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews 2 and in verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. 
Where, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard them, God also bearing, also bearing them witness both with what? Signs. Signs and wonders. And with the diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Uh, this was affirmed before us, wasn't it? This word that was given to us. It was affirmed by these miracles, signs, and wonders. Okay. Ah, uh, I probably shouldn't have started it. All right, we're going we're gonna to get more into this next week concerning signs and wonders and, and, and show how those things um, uh, authenticated the authority and the message. Okay? And this is what Nebuchadnezzar, uh, in all honesty and in praise to God, is freely admitting. How great are his signs? How great are his wonders? And uh, we could say the same today. Uh, we have a blessed sign, don't we? What's the, what's the sign that's given to the church? The empty tomb. The empty tomb. We could say the same, couldn't we? How great are his signs. How great is his wonder, right? And this is the king of the everlasting kingdom and dominion. Okay. Uh, it is a mighty thing how God chooses to propagate his gospel and who he is and his kingdom. Let's end with a word of prayer. Our gracious God and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we pray that you would bless us, that your face would shine upon us. Father, we pray for the gospel and thy word as it goes forth in truth, spirit, and light. And Father, we pray that this would be our testimony. That in, that in us is the spirit of the mighty God and, and proclaiming his word and showing Christ that men may be saved. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay. Well, we got through it, then we? have got <laughs> between time zone, lost phone, and snow. We pulled it off by God's grace, didn't we? <laughs> All right. All right. I'm very glad to see and have you this morning. Um, naturally, it quits snowing and it's melting. That's what spring snows do. Hi. <laughs> right? Um, but I didn't want to take the risk. So I'm glad that we can still have services. All right. God bless all of you. I'll see some of you on Sun on, on Tuesday. All right. <laughs> God, God bless you. All right. Bye. Thank you, Lord. Okay, done here. Oh. Oh. All right, Lois, how are we doing over down there in Waverly? Oh, we're doing great, Dad. Let's go. Okay, that's good. I'm, gl I'm glad to hear it. How is Kathy? Okay. How's Kathy doing?